Welcome to Inside the Paint. It's an inside look into all of the action of the British Basketball League. I'm Jeanette Kwachi. And before we get going, make sure to like, share, and if you haven't already, please do subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of the action. We're already two months in and you've been voting for your October's Moulton Kevin Cadle Coach of the Month and Moulton Player of the Month too. And I'm joined by former London Lion Obi Soko and Leicester Riders head coach Rob Paternostro. And we have the results here. How exciting. Um, Ovi, please do the honours of the first result. Drum roll, please. <laughs> okay. In third place, we have Peter Boystich mm -hmm. with 12% of the vote. Second place, up in Scotland, we have Gareth Murray, who had 37% of the vote. And in first place... Andreas Kapoulis with 51% of the vote from and Bristol, man. Very good. Do you have a word do You have a word on your peers here, Coach Rob? Oh, yeah. Good month for Andreas. Had a good run of games. Uh, I think he won five in a row, maybe six in a row. So his team's playing really good basketball at the moment. Okay, fantastic. And what about the Player of the Month results, please? Player of the Month in third place with 22% of the vote. Former player of mine, Patrick Whelan. In second place... With 31.9% of the vote from Bristol, Tejan Lucas. And in first place, it was really close, with 32% of the vote, London's Matt Morgan. Fantastic, Matt Morgan. He's done a great job, hasn't he, Ovi? He's a bucket. He's a bucketo. <laughs> He's a basket getter. A bucket getter. He gets them. Hey, man, the guy can fly out, score. Congratulations to him. It's been brilliant. Great results. And you two, you definitely should be like on Eurovision or something, giving out point scores. You're fantastic. Very, very good. Well, let us know what you think of these results in the comments below and tell us who you think should be nominated for November. I look forward to getting into that with you. This Thursday night, though, the Manchester Giants hosted the Cheshire Phoenix. Let's take a look at what happened. The Phoenix came out fighting during this Northwest Derby, dominating the arc while Manchester struggled to finish and racked up 34 points by the end of the first. This three-point party didn't stop in the second quarter as Maceo Jack and the rest of the Phoenix set a pace that the Giants couldn't even keep up with and finished the half leading 66 to 46. There were no sleeping Giants at the start of the second half as Manchester came back and cut down Cheshire's lead to single figures and as the Phoenix failed to stop the Giants from scoring. Despite a weaker defensive performance, the Giants couldn't catch up to Phoenix's early lead and Cheshire secured the win with a final score of 116 to 88. Now, a dominant performance, but look at what happened after Coach Rob. These are not scenes you want to see, but it just goes to show how much needle can be in these derbies. Yeah, I think they were disappointed, Manchester, in the timeouts called at the end of the game. Anybody who's been around the game a long time knows that you know you don't call timeout when you're up 30. So I could tell why they were mad, and you could see that um, it spilled over after the game. Absolutely, but what a dominant performance by Cheshire. They are, they're just impressing so much this season. Yeah, Cheshire, they went in there and they got the job done. They did what you're supposed to do in a derby, you know? They took care of business. Um, a little bit unfortunate uh, with some of the scenes at the end. And, you know, I've got to echo sort of coach's comments there. I feel like there's a little bit of cheek mm. um, from, from Coach Ben over at Cheshire. You know, you got the job done, sort of, you know, let's, let's move on to the next game. But dominant performance. Absolutely dominant performance. Well, that's Thursday. On Friday, we have two games, starting with Caledonia Gladiators making the long journey down to the pavilions. They take on the Plymouth City Patriots. And uh, Coach Rob, you played against Caledonia last week, didn't you? Suffered a defeat in the in the dying stages. How difficult a team are they? Yeah, they're tough. Uh, they're a hard-nosed team with a lot of strength, a lot of physicality, but tough schedule for them this week. They were in Spain. Now they head to Plymouth. I think they play Bristol at the end of the week. So this will really test their depth, the schedule that they have coming up. And for you, Ovi, what do you think it'd be like to be actually coach? Coached by like a, a former player on the team, Coach Gareth now, of course a player now, a coach. What's that like, do you think? I think uh, there's an element of being able to relate to the coach and knowing that the coach knows exactly what you're, what you're going through. He knows how it feels when you're tired in the fourth quarter. He's been in close games. Um, he's had the coach yelling on it down his back. So I feel like from that perspective, he's able to relate with his guys. Absolutely. Um, coach Paul, this 500 wins he's going for in the league, it keeps on eluding him. Coach Rob, where, when's it going to come? <laughs> well, I mean, you think it will come at home if it's going to come because they have a great fan support down there. The place really gets up. So this may be a chance to get a, a tired Caledonia team. Uh, let's see what they can do. Let's see what they can do indeed. To finish off Friday, the Bristol Flyers head to the Copper Box to take on the London Lions. It's the battle of the top two teams in the league standing. 
Holdings and the October Player and Coach of the Month. So let's go to our commentary team of Dan Routledge and former London liner Zania Stewart. Zania, Bristol, they're operating in a completely different league, a completely different zone at the moment. What's going on over there? How impressed are you by their performance? Yeah, I think they're fantastic, Jeanette. But for me, it's all about the player of the month, Matt Morgan. Incredible. The last time these two players, um, teams played, London beat them 98 to 84. And Matt Morgan, Dan, had 25 points. Matt Morgan is the number one, obviously, man of the month, but also points per game is leading all scorers. Well, both these teams coming off the back of European defeats this week uh, as well. And interestingly for Bristol, they've been playing really well. But now Keedy Johnson out injured, Raul Graham Bell out injured with the game in midweek as yeah. well. Fatigue might be an issue for them with a shortened rotation. Yeah, and Ollison and Jacob are going to have to really step up if they're going to want to push the London Lions, who are 11 and 0. They're feeling good. They're playing well. And, you know, London Lions always come out on top. Wow. There's no bias over here from Azania, surely. So <laughs> Azania and Dan, thank you very much. On Saturday, get ready for a triple header, though. We're starting with the Surrey Scorchers hosting the Cheshire Phoenix. Now, Surrey will be hoping to build some momentum. And Cheshire may be tired from their game against Manchester. Ovi, alongside me, who do you think will be in for a chance for Surrey here to maybe secure their, their third win? I think it's actually going to be a really interesting game. They're one of the teams that throw dif different defensive looks um, at Cheshire, and, and the last time they played it was was a close close matchup. Um, so I feel like Surrey they're starting to find their feet in the league. They're finding a style of play that gives them a chance to win. So you know I think at home they'll they'll pop a good fight this weekend. I think they have a chance. Yeah, and it's that momentum they need, isn't it, Coach Rob? That feeling of winning again to really give them the confidence. Yeah, learning how to win, and they won a tough overtime game recently, and that has to help. But obviously, playing at home will be a good thing for them. Last time they played them, we spoke about it earlier, that was a game they felt was winnable. So they have a chance now to come back and get the job done. Absolutely. Well, the second game on Saturday is between two teams that have had a rivalry growing so far this season. The Newcastle Eagles will travel to take on the Leicester Riders. Coach Rob, this is your team, your squad. Newcastle twice now and have won, won and lost one each game. It got heated up. Describe how you're feeling ahead of the game. Yeah, it was a great game. Both times, actually, we played up there. We played twice in Newcastle, so nice to be back home. But we always expect a good rivalry game with them. You know, over the years, you know, 16 seasons for me, the majority of the big games we had were against the Newcastle Eagles. So our fans really expect a good game. Their fans expect a good game, which brings a great atmosphere at the arena. Well, I wish you the best of luck, Coach Thank Rob. You. I wish you the best of luck. And to finish off Saturday, the Sheffield Sharks will host the Manchester Giants. These are the two teams that haven't had the most consistent performances so far this season. Now, Ovi, both of these teams are both currently sitting in the bottom half of the table. Who have you got your money on? I've got Sheffield, you know, because I feel like Sheffield, where they have been a little bit inconsistent, they know the style of play that they want to um, emulate. They know, you know, what Coach Lyons wants to get done over there. And I think it's just a, a job now of, of bringing the newer guys up to scratch and then building a the consistency from there. But I feel like it's one of the best defensive teams um, in the league. And, and that in itself will give them a chance, I think, to win the game. What about you, Coach? Rob, Sheffield or Manchester? Especially after, you know, what we've seen from Manchester on this Thursday. We have to see something different from Manchester, I'll tell you that. If they play like this tonight, they'll be in trouble. But they're going to have to figure it out right away. And I think with Sheffield, they play their game. You have to disrupt them. If you allow them to play their tempo, their style, they're going to be really tough to beat. Mm, okay. Well, we want to know what you think. Make sure you leave a comment to let us know which game you'll be watching this weekend. And on Sunday, we have another doubleheader starting with the Bristol Flyers hosting the Caledonia Gladiators. Both teams are in the top half of the league tables. Azania and Dan, are they meeting your expectations so far this season, guys? Yeah, I think so, uh, especially Caledonia. Sorry, Coach Rob, to do this to you, but they got a huge win against them, a 1.84 to 83. They're going to be feeling really confident where Bristol, you know, are going to have a tough game against London and then have to play Caledonia. Well, both these teams are busy week, both in European action uh, in the midweek. Both got a double header here. Bristol, less travel. They only went to the Copper Box and back. Caledonia have been to Spain and then to Plymouth yeah. and then to Bristol. It'll be interesting to see which of these two teams is the fresher at the end of the game. Thank you, guys. To finish off the weekend, the Plymouth City Patriots will host the London Lions. Now, Plymouth brought in two new players, Spencer Levy and Terrell Green. And Ovi, what's that like in the dressing room when they kind of join a little bit later on in the season? Hard for them to gel or is it quite a, a welcoming environment? 
I mean, I've been a new player, you know. When I when I played, went out to Italy, I was a guy that joined them on the back end of the season. Um, and there's already some friendship groups that have been formed. Some guys are closer than others. But ultimately, they're there to do a job. So I feel like now, in the position at Plymouth are in, they're going to have to welcome the newcomers, get them acclimated as quickly as they can, uh, and, and get ready for the beatdown on Sunday, because London's going to stick it on them. Oh, wow. Well, my next question was going to be to Coach Rob, because it's hard to see past a London win. I hope he's just answered it on your behalf. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, you can't pick against them right now. Obviously, they're playing great basketball. Really like watching what they do. Busy week for them, no question about it. So by the time they get to Sunday, I guess Plymouth have to hope that they don't have any left in the tank. But what we've seen this season is they have a deep bench and a team that is always ready to play. Well, it's an exciting game week. A eh? lot of fixtures will be coming up for you of course right here with the British Basketball League we've had the Manchester Giants against Cheshire Phoenix already then on Friday it is the Plymouth City Patriots Caledonia Gladiators at half past seven just 15 minutes later it's the London Lions tipping off against the Bristol Flyers then triple head of you on Saturday Surrey Scorchers against Cheshire Phoenix at five Leicester Riders against the Newcastle Eagles at half past seven and Sheffield Sharks take on the Manchester Giants at eight and then what a Sunday for you Bristol Flyers Caledonia Gladiators at three Plymouth City Patriots against the London Lions at six. It is busy. Well, that's all from us here at the British Basketball League on Inside the Paint. Please do drop a comment below on your predictions for the weekend and make sure you like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of the unbeatable action from the British Basketball League. It's bye for now.